The awesome figures were so well known that they have become part of popular culture, but sometimes we forget why they are so important and what was their contribution to humanity. So today, we are going to know a little of the life and work of Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi, whose real name was Mohanda Karamchand Gandhi, was born on October 2nd, 1869 in Port Banda, a coastal town in the small Prince state of Katiawar, currently in the state of Gujarat in India. His family was of the Vishnavit caste, it means merchant. He was the son of Karamchand Gandhi, the Divan, Prime Minister of Port Banda. His mother, Putibai, his father's first wife, had a great influence on his childhood, when Gandhi learned at an early age not to harm any living being, to be a vegetarian, to fast for puration, and to be tolerant of other religious faces. He was the youngest of three brothers, Laksmida and Karsanda, and a sister named Raliat Ben. At the age of 13, his parents arranged his marriage with Kasturba Makarji, on the same age and caste, with whom he had four children. After pursuing a regular course of studies in his homeland and when he was in his early 20s, he went to study law at University College London, becoming an expert in the legal intricacies of England. He then returned to India, but he did not remain there for long. In 1893, he moved to South Africa to work as a lawyer for an Indian company. In this country, he began his struggle for racial segregation, because by this time, there was a strong Hindu population in the African country, and the caste system prevailed. In Gadi 1906, he imposed the so-called Black Law, starting his movement of activism and non-violent resistance. Numerous and varied were his humanitarian initiatives. He instituted agricultural colonies and hospitals. And especially since then, he tried to eliminate the castes and religions that divided his people. In these relations, and in his inevitable clashes with the South African governmental authorities, he inaugurated a method of struggle, or rather of resistance, that maintained respected for the human person and avoided armed revolt, already in South Africa. In 1906, he stressed the value of Satyagraha, a force of truth, as the foundation and energy of the actions that in the West received the name of passive resistance. The incident that would serve as a catalyst for his political activism occurred two months after his arrival in South Africa. When traveling to Petroria, he was forcibly removed from the train at Peter Marysburg station because he refused to move from first class to third class, which was intended for black people. Later, traveling on a stagecoach, he was beaten by the driver because he refused to give up his seat to a white-skinned passenger. In addition, on this trip, he suffered other humiliations as he was denied accommodations in several hotels because of his race. This experience put him much more in touch with the problems faced by black people in South Africa on a daily basis. When his contract ended, he prepared to return to India as a farewell party in his honor in Durban. While browsing through a newspaper, he learned that a bill was being drafted in the Natal Legislative Assembly to deny Indians the vote. He postponed his return to India and set about the task of drafting various petitions, both of the Natal Assembly and to the British government, trying to prevent such a law from being passed. Although he did not achieve his goal, as the law was enacted, he nevertheless succeeded in drawing attention to the problems of racial discrimination against Indians in South Africa. He extended his stay in this country, founding the Natal Congress Indian Party in 1894. Through this organization, he was able to unite the Indian community in South Africa into a homogeneous political force, flooding the press and the government with complaints of violation of Indian civil rights and evidence of discrimination by the British and South Africa. We cannot fully understand Gandhi's work without first understanding the situation in India at the beginning of the 20th century. India was a colony under the rule of the British Empire, and Indians were second-class citizens in their own country. As in South Africa, the Black Act was a reality there as well, forcing all Indians aged 8 years and older to register with the British authorities, and to carry an identity card with their fingerprints on it. He returned at the end of 1914 to India, where he led a retired life until 1918, at the end of the First World War. From this year, Gandhi was practically the head of the nationalist movement. His flag at first a simple autonomy that looked its basis from economic autonomy, to be wished through no collaboration, and later, with civil disobedience, would finally become the symbol of national independence, also called Svaraj. 1920 marks an important date in Gandhi's life. 
because it was precisely in this year on the occasion of the extraordinary session of the Indian National Congress in Calcutta and in the ordinary one held shortly after in Nagpur when Gandhi obtained a great personal success. In the first session was approved and the second ratified. The implementation of a gradual passive resistance, desired and ardently advocated by Gandhi as a method of struggle against colonial oppression. Although non-violence is a common concept in Hinduism and Eastern culture Aisma, Gandhi claimed it as a universal ethical imperative, underlying all religions Buddhism, Christianity, Islam. His thought was also connected with exalted representatives of spirituality in the West from Jesus Christ to Leo Tolstoy and with political and economic terrorists such as Henri David Thoreau, formulator of the doctrine of civil disobedience. The outbreak of World War II and the fact that India was indirectly involved as a colony of the British Empire caused the Indian independence movement to gain momentum. The British authorities arrested thousands of people and Gandhi, already in his 70s, spent two years in prison. In the midst of the struggle for the independence of his country and for spreading the non-violence movement, the poet and philosopher Rabindranath Tagore christened him Mahatma, which means Great Soul, in Hindi. In 1931, he participated in the London Conference, where he called for Indian independence. He learned to the right of the Congress party and had conflicts with his disciple Nehru, who represented the left. In 1942, London sent Richard Stafford Cripps as intermediary to negotiate with the nationalists. But not finding a satisfactory solution, this radicalized their position. As a consequence, Gandhi and his wife Kasurba were deprived of their freedom and put under house arrest in the palace of Aga Khan, when she died in 1944, while he performed 21 days of fasting. Gandhi achieved political, social and cultural change, which resulted in India's independence on August 14, 1947. The British gave him as they had to reorganize their own country after World War II, but the territory of India was divided in two, India with the Hindu majority and Pakistan with the Muslim majority. Gandhi fought on, seeking reconciliation between the two social fragments and the reintegration of the community. Throughout his struggle, there are several examples of peaceful struggle. For example, in 1930, the British government was benefiting British citizens and businesses. As a protest, Gandhi promoted different non-violent actions, such as the Salt March. It was about not consuming salt, a staple product with which only British companies could trade. He was famous for his repeated and painful fasts. During his life, he fasted 16 times. The last of them, a few days before his end, is in the attempt to achieve religious peace for all India. A year after his country gained independence from the colonial regime of the British Empire, Gandhi was assassinated by a group of Indian radicals who disagreed with his ideas. On January 30, 1948, when Gandhi was on his way to a prayer meeting, he was assassinated at Briya Bhavan, Briya House in New Delhi, by Nadmura Godse, a Hindu radical apparently linked to a far right groups in India, such as the group Hindu Asaraba Party, who accused him of undermining the new government by insisting that the money promised to Pakistan be paid. Godse and his accomplice Narayan Apte were tried and sentenced to death. They were executed on November 15, 1949. However, the alleged instigator of the murderer, Haa Sabra Party, Sherman Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, was released without charge for lack of evidence. A proof of Gandhi's struggle in his search for God in his last words before he died, Hey Rama. This is interpreted as a sign of his spirituality as well as his idealism in seeking peace in his country. These words are written on the monument erected in his honor in New Delhi. Although Gandhi did not work in any public office, he was one of the most relevant characters of the Hindu independence movement, with respect to the colonialist regime of the British Empire. In addition, he became one of the most influential people in the 20th century, because along with Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King, he became a world reference for non-violent civil movements, especially for movements that hoped to achieve open political rights and changes in the social, political and economic spheres. After almost 60 years of peaceful struggle, he managed to see his country gain independence from one of the major European powers without firing a single bullet. But beyond achieving political independence, Gandhi defused numerous conflicts, advocated peaceful coexistence between Hindus and Muslims, and managed to reduce discrimination between castes, improving the living conditions of the most disadvantaged. Thanks for watching this video and find me every day on my worlds.